Hello, my name is Neto Rosatelli and welcome to the Cataract Surgery Channel. This commented surgery is a traumatic cataract case, a 27-year-old patient with an injury due to a truck battery explosion. His eye suffered non-penetrating corneal lacerations and, besides the scattered opacification, the lens presented this curious capsular wrinkling, probably due to zonular damage, which can be presumed by the observed fecal zonesis. After dispersive OVD on the cornea, main incision is made with a 2.65 diamond knife and left and right side ports done with a 1mm sapphire stab knife. Since zonular issues are expected, I made a second side port, so by manual IA can be used if the need arises. The right side port ended up being a little too long. 0.5 lidocaine is injected, followed by dispersive OVD to fill the anterior chamber. The capsular axis is made with an engraved Inamura forceps, with care not to compromise the zonules. The anterior capsule has a distinct rigid feeling due to fibrotic changes from the trauma, making it difficult to obtain a perfect round shape. This eye has a large anterior segment, and despite looking small, the rex is of adequate size. This is very important because if sucus implantation is needed, IOL optic capture with the rex's margin ensures IOL centration. The nucleus is very soft and, due to zonular compromise, effective hydrodissection and hydrodelineation are desirable, ensuring cortical release from the capsule and avoiding cortical aspiration issues. Here, the nucleus wants to prolapse, but I keep pushing it back into the back until I complete the hydrodissection and hydrodelineation. Adequate nucleus rotation is pursued here for the same reason, and even with a little insistence, it is not achieved. The incision adjacent conch opening avoids ballooning. The back can be seen slightly rotating with the maneuvers and going back, a sign of loose zonules. I decide to proceed to nucleus aspiration, diminishing intraback volume. The epinucleus shell can be more easily rotated then, in order to release more cortex. Notice that I keep the fecal tip completely still in the safe zone, while the chopper is in posterior capsule protective mode, preventing it to come to the tip. Coaxial IA with a polymer tip is chosen to do the cortex aspiration. In these cases with zonular defects, irrigating fluid can pass through the burger's space, ensuing a kind of collapsed bag, offering difficulty in cortex cleanup. Chopper assistance holding the posterior capsule down helps in subincisional cortex aspiration. This is a maneuver I often do in this situation. Luckily, the cortex easily detaches from the capsule, probably due to the previous maneuvers done. Very gentle aspiration maneuvers must be done in order to prevent capsule entrapment and zonular dialysis. This time, the bimanual probe of this transformer handpiece didn't need to come to the action. 
A little OVD over filling prior IOL implantation is beneficial in these loose back cases. The elected IOL in this case is a three-piece hydrophobic acrylic one. Its rigid haptics more able to withstand possible capsular contraction and offering various good options of IOL fixation should the need arises now or in the future. A capsular tension ring would be an excellent option here to better distribute forces throughout the zonules, but was not available. Nevertheless, zonular compromise due to trauma seldom progresses with time, so a stable situation is expected. This is a rather clumsy injector design when it comes to releasing the trailing haptic. One must be sure the trailing haptic is free before retracting the plunger. Sometimes the trailing haptic can be directly implanted with the plunger itself, but not in this case. The chopper pushes the IOL's armpit in a swift downward dialing movement and the trailing haptic goes in the back. Now, if you walk the line of the row axis, you can confirm the IOL is completely in the back. The two parallel folds in the posterior capsule are another sign of successful in the back haptic placement. Ovalization of the rex's margin after IOL implantation confirms some zonular compromise. Carbacol 0.01% is injected, despite the complete capsule overlap, to ensure iris coverage holding the back down in case of anterior chamber shallowing. OVD aspiration follows. Again, maneuvers must be carefully done to prevent zonular dialysis. I prefer to avoid going under the IOL this time, doing a gentle rock and roll on the IOL to dislodge OVD under it. The key in these traumatic cases is to be as gentle and careful as possible, aiming to preserve remaining zonules so that an in-the-bag IOL implantation is achieved. IOL centration is evaluated and stromal hydration seals the incisions. Hydration of the main incision's roof is necessary to achieve a good ceiling. I wish very successful surgeries for all of you. Search Neto Rosatelli on YouTube or click on the link below and visit my other channel with cataract fake clips. Please like, share, subscribe and turn notifications on, so you don't miss upcoming videos. Thank you for watching.